All right. Well, welcome again, everyone, to uh, student perceptions of the impact of QM certified online courses um, on their learning and engagement. Um, Aisha, I will turn the, the presentation over to you. All right. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. So today I'm going to share um, a study that we did at UNC Charlotte. Uh, I did with my colleagues, uh, Dr. Florence Martin and Dr. Uh, Lynn Elgrim. Um, and I'm going to share the results of the study on and we explored students' perceptions of the impact of QM certified online courses uh, on their learning and engagement here um, at UNC Charlotte. Uh, and my name is Aisha Sadov. I'm an associate professor of learning design and technology in the Department of Educational Leadership. And um, a little bit of background that here um, in our program, all our courses are QM certified and we have program level certification as well for student success and student learning. Uh, so we um, as, as faculty wanted to see what are our students' perceptions and which uh, standards or QM specific standards they think is important for their learning and uh, from their perceptions as well. So moving on. And here is actually the, the uh, article that we published um, and it's published in Online Learning Journal and, uh, and it was published in 2019. And, and as you can see the the uh, you can see the year of publication it's it's right before covid and even at that time we realized how much uh, you know online education is um, rapidly growing but even after covid this study is even more uh, important as you know people are uh, quickly moving to online and they are they are realizing the importance or benefits of online education however instructors they still lack the pedagogical or, you know, instructional support, and they struggle to find strategies that are really effective uh, to facilitate student learning. And for this reason, quality matter standards, they've been widely used and because they really are focused on, uh, you know, student learn, learn, um, learner centered approach, and they assure the quality of online ed as well as blended courses and give us a guideline, a comprehensive guideline that uh, any, any instructor can uh, used to create an effective course that could impact student learning. And, and one of the core principles of QM is a uh, consideration of learner perspective and the learner voices. So that's why it's, it's important to see what they think, even though they are comprehensive, these are research-based, but uh, students' voices are, we thought that it's important to look at that as well. Uh, a little bit of quality matters. Um, it's we all know recognized worldwide and uh, a lot of different countries uh, internationally it's being used because it's a reliable method of quality assurance in online learning. Um, and, and there has been a lot of research that, that has been done uh, that shows that uh, the evidence that indicates that student learning is improved when the instructors design or redesign their online courses using, using the standards. So, <clears throat> um, and, and since QM uh, it, program, it is very rigorous. Um, it's a pre peer review process, internal, external. It has a very comprehensive rubric that's based on standards of uh, best practice. They are research supported as well as, you know, uh, it, it meets the instructional design principles uh, as well. So here is, um, wait, uh, here are the, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, the QM rubric, it includes eight general standards and that consists of uh, 43 sub uh, standards and for this research study, we use the sixth um, uh, uh, versions, uh, what is it, uh, the higher education, but sixth, uh, uh, you know, standard. So, uh, so these are the eight um, uh, main categories uh, that we looked at, course overview and introduction, learning objectives, assessments and measurements, instructional materials, uh, course activities and learner interaction, course technology, learner support, accessibility, and usability. These are the main general uh, standards. And here, if you can see, this is how the rubric looks like. Um, and in the left corner, uh, left column, you can see the general standards, eight standards. And in the middle, there are substandards that, uh, you know, they are more specific um, guidelines and in the right corner uh, column you can see that there are points attached to these sub uh, standards and and the points uh, and you you can see it's one two and three three um 
shows that the importance that it's it's really important to include in the course two is it's kind of medium importance and one is it's it's good to have that in the course to make it more effective for student learning uh, so these are quality matter rubric standards and some and the objectives that they represent and why they are there so i'm going to just quickly go over them. Uh, the first one is, as I mentioned, course overview and introduction. So the uh, uh, the purpose of this objective is to have like a clear uh, course design uh, so that students know, and it helps them understand how to get started in the course, uh, introducing themselves, introducing uh, the instructor, as well as the course content. The second is focused on learner objectives, and that is the key, uh, you know, for all uh, the standards that it has to be clearly stated uh, from a student perspective that are measurable, that are properly aligned, and it's easy to understand for the students uh, as well. Third is assessment and measurement. Again, assessments are, should be aligned with the learning objectives. Whatever you want students to achieve, you should measure that. Uh, they should be consistent with the course activities and resources. They should be clearly explained how the course grades are calculated so students are, uh, they know uh, how they can be successful within the course. Uh, the fourth one is focused on instructional materials. Um, the material that you use uh, should be comprehensive to achieve, again, learning objectives and competences that you're, you attend your uh, students to gain. Fifth one is focused on learning activities and learner interaction. And again, this is important learning activities and forms of interaction that instructors create or incorporate in the course. They should motivate students to attain the course objectives and also promote their learning. Sixth is course technology. Um, that includes uh, course navigation and any technology that you are using uh, that should be also uh, you know, focused on supporting students' engagement and achieving the learning objectives that they uh, wanna achieve, uh, that you want them to achieve. Um, seventh is learner support. Uh, course should provide links to all the resources for students since they are online and uh, they're not in face-to-face -face environment and they don't have access to campus resources. It's very important for instructor to have like a, a place where students will be able to um, access the links to all the resources, institutional and academic policies, uh, technology support, students to support and any essential uh, uh, support that students, that's important for uh, student success. And the last one is accessibility and usability. Um, and this also is focused on course uh, that it provides documentation for accessibility of the course materials, tools, activities for all students. And it's even more important since more and more students are, um, you know, uh, accessing courses online to have, um, uh, to be able to, you know, have accessible materials, accessible documents or videos, whatever you're offering, that uh, it should be, uh, you know, all the students in the course should be able to access them effectively. So um, let's define engagement a little bit uh, before we get into the study. Engagement is actually the ability to hold somebody's attention or to induce the individual to participate in some activity. So that's kind of an engagement. And uh, looking at Dixon's uh, definition um, is that it's the extent to which students' activities um, engage, um, extent to which students actively engage in thinking, talking, and interacting with the content of the course other students in the course, as well as the instructor. So all these um, activities need to be present in an online course or blended course for students uh, to impact their learning or engagement, engaging them effectively. Um, and students engage more with the course content. Uh, there have been some studies that done on QM that shows that students are you know, uh, engaged more in the course content as the result of uh, interactive activities designed based on the QM guidelines. In terms of learning, it's an acquisition of knowledge or skills uh, through experience, um, study, or by being taught. So Ali defined learning as the use of internet for specifically online learning as the use of internet to access learning materials, to interact with the content, instructor, and learners, and to obtain support during the learning process in order to acquire knowledge, to construct uh, personal meaning and to grow from learning experience. And, and um, again, you know, Ligon and uh, Ranyon, uh, they found that student learning and satisfaction, they did increase for courses that are designed with QM uh, criteria. And there have been other studies as well that shows that learning improves. 
Um, so these are some of the other findings uh, in the past studies that were focused on QM standards, uh, courses or programs that have been designed. It, it improves um, higher grades, uh, students' interaction, uh, students' perception of the course quality is better. Um, and you can see course navigation and requirements to succeed in the courses uh, were also improved. And also um, relationship between student satisfaction and QM certified courses. So that those are some of the past findings. However, um, you know, researchers, they've been studying outputs of QM standards, re research on student perception of uh, their learning and engagement in QM certified courses was limited. So that was the reason that we decided to do the study in our uh, program. Uh, so the purpose of the study was to examine student perception of QM standards on their engagement and learning in QM certified courses. Um, online courses, our uh, program is entirely online, asynchronous, our master's and uh, EDD, PhD program, and that's where we you know, uh, collected data from. Um, so the two questions guided our study. Uh, the first question was, what are online students' perceptions of the impact of QM standards in QM certified courses on their learning? And the second one was, again, focused on the engagement of uh, students, uh, you know, their perceptions of their engagement in online courses. So here's the methods we used a survey based research. Um, there were 50 participants and they were all graduate students. They were enrolled in online learning design and technology course LDT program in the College of Education here at UNC Charlotte. There were 28 males, uh, 72 females. 23 to 53 years of age in between uh, master's degree student, graduate certificate, and postdoctoral students. Uh, we collected data from three different three semesters in 2017, so uh, spring, summer, and fall. And uh, again, you know, it's it was collected at the UNC Charlotte LDT program, Learning Design and Technology program, um, and all the courses are, uh, as I mentioned, QM certified, uh, and we also have had at that time uh, program level QM certification for program design and learner success. Um, so for instrument, we use the quality matter rubric um, and we use the 43 QM standards uh, within the eight categories that we use to create the survey. Uh, for each QM standard, we rated on the scale uh, from zero to three, zero, no impact, and three was a lot of impact on the two constructs. One was on learning. We used uh, the sub um, categories, one for learning, and then uh, the, the other construct was focused on engagement. Uh, students were asked uh, the question, um, please think about each standard and rate how much impact this standard has on your online learning and engagement. Wow. Wow. So um, am I missing anything? Okay. Uh, so Kronbach Alpha as an estimate of internal consistency of student responses was high across items. It was 0.9. And for construct, uh, you know, learning was 0.94 and engagement was 97. So it was pretty high. And then we had two open-ended questions that we asked about, you know, the strategies that impacted them the most so that they can explain the quantitative uh, data more. For data analysis, we use descriptive statistics um, to report students' perceptions again, and we created a table with means and standard deviations uh, to generate and describe the responses. And then open-ended uh, survey question data were coded and categorized into eight QM rubric categories. Um, and then we looked at a use constant comparison approach to further explain the survey results. So here are the results of the study. Um, for um, for the first question that was focused on learning, we found that students rated the top two rated QM standard were course activities and learner interaction, and the second was one was learning objectives. So students found uh, you know uh, course activities and learner, learner interaction as well as objectives to be to impact their learning the most. And within uh, those, uh, for course activities and learner interaction, the highest rated item was learning activities were consistent with the objectives. So students appreciated the consistency between the objectives and how the activities were really aligned with what they were supposed to achieve in the objectives. 
And the second highest was uh, learning objectives. And they uh, and within that, students uh, rated learning objectives consistent with the course level objectives. So they really appreciated or thought that their learning was improved because learning objectives were consistent with the course objectives and they were all aligned all together. And for open-ended questions, uh, uh, looking at online learning strategies uh, from 50 students, again, you know, uh, course activities and learner interaction was the highest, 20 students out of 50 uh, uh, talked about how those were effective for their learning. And then the second highest was instructional materials that they thought added to their learning in the course material. And then again, accessibility, usability, learning objectives and assessments and measurement. For uh, online students' percep perceptions of the impact of QM standard uh, in uh, and certified courses on their engagement, uh, we found that the top two rated were um, course activities and learner interaction. Again, uh, students uh, believe that the engagement, uh, you know, that impacted their engagement. And also learning objectives. Again, uh, these were um, instructional design students. So, you know, they, they uh, really saw the importance of learning objectives in contributing to their engagement and contributing to their um, learning as well. So under course activities and learn, learner interaction, highest rated item was opportunities for learner interaction. So they really, students appreciated that there were opportunities built in the uh, assignments and activities where you know they they were um, encouraged or motivated to uh, participate in the in uh, in their activities uh, through learner interaction, uh, and for learning objectives, the high highest rated item was clear relationship between learning objectives and the course activities. So again, they they appreciated that you know there were there was a clear relationship that that students can can perceive. Uh, for open-ended, again, you know, student activities and learner interaction, 15 students out of 50 thought that they were, um, you know, uh, that contributed to their engagement. And then instructional materials used in the course uh, added to their um, engagement as well. And then uh, accessibility objectives and assessments were um, following, you know, the first two. So these were the top two that students uh, talked about. So in terms of discussion, uh, looking at the past studies, what they found, again, you know, course activities and learner interaction, as we've seen for both uh, learning and engagement was the most important uh, for students, um, uh, you know, and, and looking at other past examples, you know, course design with QM rubric result. So our, our results, they support the other uh, findings that that has been done in the past that they do improve student content interaction. Students are satisfied, you know, um, with the instructor, when instructors provide opportunities to interact, uh, you know, in different ways uh, uh, to the students. And again, intentionally designing courses uh, for increasing student interaction can positively ex uh, impact students' overall academic achievement. So not only learning and uh, uh, their engagement, but it leads to their academic achievement, better grades, better retention in uh, online courses. Um, and again, learning objective was uh, again the second um, highest uh, among the eight categories uh, which impacted student uh, learning and engagement both. Uh, so if you look at the past studies, you know, informing learners of objectives, we know that how important as instructional designers or online instructors, how important that they are. So it was neat to see that students also realize the importance um, and also at the beginning of the course, it's how much it's important to, you know, clarifying uh, those objectives and for students to be able to see and uh, focused on their learning that's and then intended to uh, build in the course and clarify it. Uh, Razor and Dick, they, they mentioned that it's important informing the learners of the objective at the beginning of instruction, clarifies what is expected of them, assist them in guiding their learning. So again, you know, it was kind of like reinforced that uh, finding. And then uh, Karen Swan also found that student performance in online graduate level courses improved because of QM revision. Uh, focus on mapping of objectives to learner outcomes as well. Um, so in terms of instructional material, that was another thing that students uh, felt uh, was important for their learning and engagement. And if you look at the past studies, 
Uh, they also see that the benefits of having variety of activities, including you know, chat room, discussion boards, and just kind of like, you know, having different variety helps students uh, keep them engaged and uh, learn better. And again, um, you know, it's, it's very significant part of instructional design process, as we know, uh, presenting the instruction in uh, different uh, materials as well. So there are several implications of the study, um, you know, based on the results that we found. So study, it has implications for instructional designers, um, also online instructors or anybody who's trying to, um, you know, teach online courses and focus on the quality and using quality matter standard, uh, you know, standards so that they know what students, uh, what is important for students. So um, since course activities and learner interaction was the most important standard to impact student learning and engagement, instructors, you know, using these guidelines can focus on activities that engage students to become active learners. For example, instructors can incorporate um, collaborative learning activities. They can uh, use problem-based learning, such as uh, case-based learning, uh, you know, that can create a community of online learners through peer-to-peer -peer interactions as well, and, you know, offering instructor interaction as well. And, you know, kind of, and students can interact with uh, course content, uh, you know, as well as each other through discussion boards. Uh, we can do uh, group work. Uh, we can use peer review assignments. So, um, you know, uh, and, th and so that it can encourage students to work together and be active participants in the whole learning process. Um, in addition, students, you know, uh, they also ranked um, high the necessity of having clear aligned learning objectives uh, within the course activities. So uh, so in this regard, you know, instructors can use the syllabus or, uh, you know, focus on or the course introductions to specifically explain how different course activities are aligned with the learning objectives and how the course activities will help students achieve uh, their learning goals. Uh, so that would help. Um, instructors can um, uh, also create e-lessons, uh, you know, at the uh, beginning of their modules um, uh, or maybe videos, small, um, you know, sh short videos at the beginning of the course to introduce, you know, uh, weekly activities, uh, clearly explain learning objectives um, that indicate what students will learn and be able to do after successfully completing the assignments every week uh, that students are focused on. And then um, uh, instructor can, you know, also uh, in terms of instructional material, uh, instructors can uh, present uh, instructional materials in a variety of formats uh, using different courses, uh, course technologies to meet the needs of different learning styles. Uh, for example, instructors can use uh, digital media, audios, videos, uh, such as YouTube. Uh, we can use post podcast. Um, TED Talks are a, a good way to introduce content um, and, uh, you know, adding media in the courses, um, screencast o matic cast would be a good way, PowerPoint, Prezi, and so on. There are so many technologies that, you know, we have access to that, that can enrich, uh, you know, learning environment that promotes uh, learner engagement and active learning in the courses. In addition, um, you know, instructors uh, can use diagrams or tables or pictures or games and or simulations and there's so much that they can make uh, content visually appealing and also that will help sustain motivation and deeper understanding of the content for uh, students uh, in the courses as well. So, uh, so again, you know, it's important to have an alignment to QM standards. Uh, that is key. And, you know, in our study, we found, um, and, and main, maybe, you know, in our study, it's, it was more instructional designers, designer. Our students are instructional designers. So they saw the benefit of alignment and they are, that's what they're learning. So they see it maybe, you know, in other, um, content area or maybe some other, uh, uh, you know, it, the results may be different, but narrowing this, the search for impact of QM review to specific group of standards such as course alignment standards or learner engagement standards can be, uh, you know, really uh, productive for an online uh, course uh, that is being taught. Um, this is all that I have. Again, here is the publication. If you want to learn more about uh, my uh, this study, you can read this publication. Here's my contact information as well. And I would uh, like to take any questions if there are any. Uh, 
Okay. Please feel free to unmute yourself and, and jump in if you have a question. You can also place it in the chat if you're a little shy like myself. Um, Aisha, I noticed that there was a, a question earlier in the chat from Melissa. Um, she asked, do you share like an alignment matrix in the courses? Um, and did you ask students how they made those connections? Uh, referring to standards uh, 2.4 and 4.2, we're trying to refine how we ensure that those are met. Um, we actually don't share the alignment metrics. I think there's just one course, uh, uh, online course development uh, in, in that students learn about um, QM standards and they go through uh, everything, but not uh, other. So we have in our program, have we have three concentration. One is K-12, one is higher ed and one, uh, online teaching and learning, and one is focused on training and development. So only students who want to you know, uh, specialize in the concentration of online teaching and learning. They take a, an online course where they learn about QM um, rubric and QM standards and, you know, how to in, incorporate them in their courses when they design, mm -hmm. but not specifically, but like this data was collected from the entire program, different students. So they weren't specifically like maybe few who were online students uh, or concentration knew about the standards, but not, but not everybody. Uh, but I think like when they learn about instructional design, we uh, they have to, that's creating objectives and especially our courses, every course, every module is QM certified and we have QM rubric, QM standard. So they're used to that. They're used to seeing the objective there, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, and the alignment as well, because we reinforce as instructors. Uh, so, yeah, that's what they are familiar with, not specifically the rubric uh, itself. Excellent. Thank you, Aisha. Um, and I noticed somebody else had raised a hand. Oh, I'll be quiet. Brenda, I see a hand there. Is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. So Jamie said, I wonder if these results would be repeated or redef uh, redefined post COVID. You know, that would be really interesting because. Uh, you know, I was invited to present the study and I, I, I just noticed that it was before COVID and we thought oh, online is important and stuff. And now even more. And yeah, I would love to, you know, see this. Uh, and, and at that time, even we thought like it'll be interesting to do the study in some other maybe engineering or some other uh, focus area and see how uh, it is different. Maybe in STEM courses or STEM programs, it would the, maybe the results would be different. Uh, but yeah, we didn't do that, but that's a good idea. And especially after COVID, then seeing how perspectives have changed or, you know, the, the, the results would be different. Uh, that would be an interesting study. Yeah, I agree, Iris. <laughs> I just mentioned like a master's ID program only mentions QM. Uh, there should have been a whole course based on these standards. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, I... I hear about conversation, oh, these are just basic because we are instructional designers, we don't, we don't, we see that they are just basic guidelines, but it's so important, but because there are so many instructors who don't even know online teaching learning and uh, they see the value of how, you know, effective these courses are just following the basics. And then, you know, you can always add more interaction and they can be done more, uh, but having all of those in there is tremendously, and we, uh, you know, we uh, promote our program uh, as, you know, QM certified and our students, they take few courses, research courses out of our program and they just kind of like a little bit cry that, oh, they're not <laughs> And I said, okay, you know, like you're not used to um, not, you know, being in a course that is not QM certified and then you, they can see the difference. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's amazing, you know, how uh, it, it, students uh, see its importance as well. Yeah, Iris said these guidelines are more than basic. True, you know, it's 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 kind of like you know these are uh, basic things that we need. But the good thing is that you know there are points attached to it, and you see that there are more important things that 
You cannot teach an online course without that. And then you can do always more, uh, you know, on that. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we forget. So it's, it's it's good to yeah keep reminding ourselves the important of you know all all the guidelines and the you know these objectives standards that we need to follow. I, I noticed there was a question in the chat um, about which course was involved in the study, and I think you mentioned it was uh, like an instructional design course. No, it was uh, in the entire program. So we collected data in three semesters from all the students from everybody. So, uh, so 50, only 50 students completed the survey, but they were, uh, you know, uh, from uh, masters, all master's students for all our uh, grad cert students. So we have like, right now we have five pro, pro at that time we had three programs. We had, um, yeah, grad cert, they are post master certificate in online teaching and learning. So those students completed the survey. Um, and, and they were all asynchronous online uh, courses. So the entire program uh, was part of the study, not just one course. Thank you for that. That's really helpful to kind of clarify and to, right. to put into context. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, just thank you so much for doing this study. Um, I just think it's going to be so helpful for faculty at my institution to see that this does make an impact on students. Um, it's really hard sometimes, not always, but it can be hard to convince them that things like course objectives are important because students don't necessarily engage with them. So I really just wanted to thank you for thinking about this intersection and sharing what you learned with us. You're welcome. And then the, the paper does have like more, uh, we have the instrument that we used, kind of paraphrased everything and with the points attached. So it, uh, the, the publication has more information in that if you're interested in reading that. So out of my, my own curiosity, um, in, in talking about replication, um, and talking about replicating this post-COVID, I think there's would definitely be some interest in kind of replicating the study with the same programs, but in thinking about replicating it with others, are there other particular programs that stand out to you that would be interesting to do this? And would you consider looking or looking at a program that isn't QM certified? That's an interesting, uh, that would be an interesting study as well. Um, yeah, I think like we, since, you know, our program, we do QM certified courses and teach them and uh, make sure our instructors are all QM certified peer reviewers and basic, you know, so we just wanted to see, but yeah, I, I think it would be really interesting to see in, in any other program and non-QM as well, like what their perceptions are to kind of like a, uh, a comparison point of seeing how uh, this benefits and uh, not having or so that, you know, maybe it'll help convince instructors who don't think it's important or maybe, you know, to see the importance. Um, yeah, um, maybe uh, in, in our institution there, it's QM is huge. A lot of like, you know, people see the benefits and um, uh, we, we had a huge, you know, uh, support through our Center of Teaching and Learning as well. So, so instructional designers, they work with faculty and they provide incentives even to them, uh, uh, you know, for uh, kind of like redesigning or having their courses certified online to just to uh, maintain the, you know, the, the, the quality of online teaching and learning. So yeah, but I, I think it will be, a, to answer your question, would be an interesting study. I would Love to see if anybody else would do that. The instrument is there in the in my study, um, or maybe in future I I could uh, go in that direction. But uh, right now it's uh, I haven't followed up with that. And yeah, post COVID would be great. And now, like we have our our students have doubled after COVID. You know, uh, people are realizing the importance of 
instructional design more. <laughs> so, um, so, so we are having, so maybe it's going to be, we can do another study and see uh, post COVID, what are the results? If they're similar, or something has changed and maybe students are, uh, they perceive some other standards more important than the, you know, pre COVID. So yeah, that can be an interesting study that we can do, replicate. Or maybe do it, do it some other countries as well. Like, you know, there are so many other countries who are using QM standard now um, and see how, you know, maybe other countries they're seeing. And some, some they're just starting to learn about online. Like in US, like it's, I've been doing research for the past 10 years, and but there are some countries that are just starting off, uh, you know, with uh, online teaching learning and they are using QM as, as a, you know, guideline to do effective online teaching too, it's, it's, it'll be nice to see what they see benefits uh, or, or what standards are important for them for their student learning and student engagement and um, do some comparison study. That's something that we can do. Oh, that's a really interesting point that Kay um, brought up in the chat. She says, and including um, QM institutional implementation status and QM tra trajectory within would add the extra punches to a replication study. Um, that's a really kind of interesting, I think, perspective and in where <clears throat> that institution or that program is with impl implementing QM at the time of the study. Because I think, as you mentioned, it seems like you know the program that you're looking at or that you know we we you looked at the, in the study was very familiar with it. It's very popular there. You see the benefit um, change the context to a program that is maybe just getting started and mm -hmm. is trying to design their their program from the bottom up with QM in mind, how those results might change. True. Um, and just as a, a, a newer EDD student, I always like to ask, um, other researchers, looking back on the study, is there something you maybe wish you would have done differently or a question you thought of asking after the fact? Are you asking me or the participants? Oh, you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, you know, like I have in my in paper, we have future research ideas. And one of them was that, you know, uh, and, and we presented this at the, at conferences and people were um, kind of like surprised that learning objectives was like one of the top rated and how come, you know, students, as, as you said, that instructors don't even care about, about writing objectives, like who are not instructional designers, but it's, it's hard to convince them that the importance of uh, objectives and uh, uh, you know, um, course level objectives and aligning to the module level, level objectives and how to align uh, activities and assessments and everything. And um, so it's it's interesting that, you know, um, uh, uh, yeah, to convince them, but it's this study we, we found that people are, in, uh, they, they thought that it's since it's an instructional designers and our students are familiar, that's why they rated it high. Uh, and, and we, yeah, thought of doing it, replicating the study in some other context and seeing, you know, what they think. And again, you know, um, non-QM people who don't know and be able to see uh, what is important for them. So yeah, that was something that we thought that, you know, we can do follow-up studies and then maybe do some um, qualitative um, study on that uh, as well and see more of the perce perceptions rather than just the standards maybe uh, to gain more in-depth ideas or, or perspectives from students. That was something that we um, thought of doing uh, as, as follow-up to this study. Yeah, yeah, different samples. Yeah, did I answer your question? Absolutely. <laughs> And it looks like Kay also mentioned that, you know, including the student experience and taking online courses uh, is another kind of control variable to consider in a replication. Yes. Um, right. Can I ask oh, a go question? Go for it, Kay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
this is the kind of exciting thing where good research moves. And it, this is a great conversation because, yeah, we all want the quick and dirty published, you know, <laughs> in three months study. Uh, but this conversation, you know, you take a research study and, and you think of ways that can be replicated and expanded and built on the information that we know. And, you know, this is a great, a great example of one that could really be done. Uh, so I look forward to reading it when you all get it done. Uh, but it's a kind of study that's worth the time. If, if it's just a check mark, like I, I had two things published last year, then this probably isn't for you. But uh, if you want to continue adding to the, the body of information, not just about QM, but about online learning, then this is the kind of thing it's worth over time getting involved in. So good conversation. Any other questions? All right, well, hearing none, um, Aisha, I, I really wanna thank you for a, a great presentation today. Um, we have uh, shared the link to the Google Doc uh, for your takeaways in the chat several times, but I'll post it one more time, uh, please don't you know, hesitate to, to post, you know, what your key takeaways were from the session. Um, also, if you have, you know, questions that you think of later, um, let us know. Um, I'll, you know, give everybody a little bit more time before the next session. Uh, so thank you all so much for attending. Oh, oh, and one more thing. Um, if you happen to want to come back and rewatch this session or any of the other sessions that you missed because you made a good choice in being here, um, you will have access to those recordings for 90 days. Uh, so don't forget that we'll, we'll send an email follow up after the conference. So thank you so much. <laughs>